Hello, Moto America fans, and welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. I am Vice, and I'm joined, I'm here in, in Ohio, and I'm joined in Southern California by our communications manager, Paul Carruthers. And, you know, since we're so far apart, not in emotion or in heart to heart, but just in distance, I will, I, we always like to check on each other's weather. So let's go ahead and do that. It's kind of, kind of damp here today, rainy, kind of Halloween weather. Paul, what is it? Like, absolutely beautiful there in Southern Cal. It was actually like 4th of July weather. Because <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was like, yesterday was really hot. It was 80 something. And today it's supposed to cool down. I think it's supposed to be 78, which is, to me is like ideal. I like it. Uh, I like it right around 80, but I'm not real pumped when it's, you know, gets close to 90. But no, it's yeah. been, it's been nice. Uh, this kind of, this time of year here is like my favorite because like the, you know, tourists are gone and kids are back in school and the beaches are less crowded. Everything's less crowded and, and, and the weather's still nice, but it's also the time of the year when it can change pretty quick. And, you know, every once in a while we get a little rain or something. So every once in a while we get a little taste of fall, but most of the time it seems like we skip fall. We had, we had trick or treat last night here in, in uh, the town I live in. And it's interesting because I, I live in the town, but I'm kind of in the outskirts. So a lot of people don't even realize I'm in the town limits, but they all, the kids kind of all congregate in one area around the school. And so we don't ever get any trick or treaters, but do you, uh, have you guys had trick or treat in uh, California and do they come to your house? Um, we're generally gone, but um, I think this year I'll be here, but uh, so we haven't had it yet. Okay. So maybe tonight or I don't know, I guess I better get ready. Yeah, it seems like, Paul, Paul, you could probably remember this. It seems like when we were all kids, we would have Halloween on Halloween. And now it's like it's every night except for Halloween, it seems like they're doing it. So I don't really understand what, what the deal is. Yeah, I, I, I was still counting on it being Halloween at Halloween. So we'll yeah. see, but I don't know, they probably work it around so it's not a school night or something. Yeah, that, that's probably it. And maybe, maybe because a lot of adults go out on Halloween, maybe they try to keep that. Yeah, I think it's, what is it, Sunday night, so. Um, yeah, they maybe try to separate it from the parents going out and getting drunk to the time the kids actually get candy. Yeah. Well, let's, let's bring in our guest. Uh, let's talk, I'll intro, intro him. He's somebody who's been on our podcast a few times and if, he's a favorite of, of ours. Um, he always does a good job on the podcast. I love talking to him in press conferences when he's on the podium. Um, and you know, it's funny, I was looking it up just to make doubly sure he's, he's still only 22 years old. So he's almost still young enough to trick or treat and maybe he's going to do that. But um, it's uh, Andrew Lee, our, our two time stock 1000 champion who raced in super stock prior to moving up to stock 1000. And he's kind of been a, uh, a leader bike specialist over the, over the past few years. He had a, an interesting season this year. Um, he didn't get on the podium but you know I was looking and I, I actually was surprised I didn't know that he made it to every round just because it was a tricky year for him and he works so hard on his program and um, does a good job with his sponsors but you know he's kind of like always sort of on the edge of of uh, things with with his team and there have been some changes this year and some things we'll talk about and then this coming year he's going to actually do something a little different with his program so um, let's Let's bring Andrew in. Andrew, uh, good morning. And uh, are you, do you still trick or treat or are you past that? Uh, you know, I, I do have some plans about trick or treating this year. Um, I don't know. I might just Uber to people's houses and ask for candy. So I might do it a little bit more millennial esque. So we'll, uh, we'll see what kind of pans out. Or I might be racing motorcycles. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, actually. So tell us where you are right now, right at this moment. I am. At Chukwala Valley Raceway down, down here, when you say that Paul is in SoCal, I don't know what you would consider this, but this is even, even south of Southern California. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't get much further south than this. And are you, are you coaching, riding? Are you working with, um, well, actually, this is interesting, Andrew. So you work with JP43 Training, but Jason was somewhere else yesterday. And I think we can say he was at Buttonwillow uh, riding one of the M4 bikes. So his, he wasn't there, but were you doing JP43 training without JP43 there? Yeah, we don't need that guy. We, we got this kind of, we got, the, we got the program down, but yeah, overrated. we were doing that. Yeah, he's overrated. He's, he's working on getting his senior discount from IHOP. So 
But otherwise, you know, yeah, we are. Uh, I just came out here, did some coaching yesterday, and then uh, today I'm actually doing some testing and then racing over the weekend. So it's a uh, fairly full schedule. You got to ask him what he's riding later this afternoon, Sean. Oh, what are, yeah, what are you riding? And actually, you know, we've heard some hints about this, but talk about what you're riding and actually make this announcement about next year and talk about that a little bit, Andrew, to start with, please. Yeah, so um, I'm riding the, riding the Harley, the, the king of the baggers bike. Um, I'm actually looking at it right now. Uh, thing, thing is pretty cool. Uh, very excited to do it. Um, the whole Big Bear Choppers group kind of came together and really knock this thing out of the park. So being that I've actually never really rode a Harley, even in general, it should be a lot of fun to almost learn how to ride again. So I'm excited for it. When that deal came up for you, was it something, were you hesitant? Were you like, wow, can I do this? Or do, is this what I want to do? Or were you like all in from the get go? Uh, you know, I was kind of all in, um, definitely some nervousness being that it is way different than what I have done. Um, but yeah, there was, I was kind of always into it. Um, but kind of looking back as like, kind of like third person looking in being that, you know, I came from motocross and, you know, that's what I thought I was going to do. And as a kid to now I'm 22 years old and I'm looking at myself race on a Harley this year. I'm like, well, I can guarantee 10 years ago, if you were to say, Andrew, you're going to race some Harley, I'd be like, you're full of it. So I think it's, I think it's funny. I think it's cool. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be a really cool experience. Now you're out there testing it. And then you said you're going to race this weekend. What's, what's the rest of your program shaping up to be? Obviously we don't have baggers at every race. So, um, are you going to be doing double duty? Yeah, ideally that's kind of what I'm planning on. Um, you know, just working on some of the logistics and sponsorship stuff. Um, but ideally we would be back in stock 1000 in the Superbike cup. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just every year it's kind of the same thing where it's trying to make everything possible. So that's, uh, the challenge is set forth. So we'll see. Yeah, Andrew, so Big Bear Choppers was was associated with Eric Stahl and Jiffy Tune Racing prior to this. I know he had them as a sponsor. Do you, do you know Eric, and is there any connection with him and his his uh, group at all, or, or how, how does that whole thing work? Couldn't tell you. I don't, I don't okay. really know Eric. I, I've heard the name. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't really know. Yeah, he was the one famously last year who was coming to Road America and his bike, you know, or the whole trailer and everything caught on fire and, and you know, oh really? Yeah, fully involved that. his bike. Yeah, and he ended up getting some help from Harley that weekend and had some teething pains on it to get it going. But uh, yeah, he had a he had a pretty interesting and different bike. The seating position on it was was quite interesting. We've seen a lot of weird. No, I shouldn't say weird. I should say just unusual ergonomics on these bikes to make them a little more racy. Um, is your bike fully built and set to go? And what's, what's the seating like? Are you kind of cr leaning over and you got a lot of ground clearance, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of ground clearance. Um, seating position, I think, is similar to the Harley bike that like tiles riding. Okay. Um, where it's, I, it's hard to really describe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty dialed in, I think. So, I mean, they kind of built the seat for what I wanted. And I think being today is going to be the first time I ride it. We'll get a better understanding and kind of go from there and see if there's any things we need a massage. So yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. So would that, they obviously don't have a class for baggers out there at Chuck Walla. Is there, I mean, is there any plan? Can you like sneak it into some class or is it just, is the test strictly just the test part before the races go? Well, they actually, they do. I think they have American twins or something like that now. Oh, okay. So yeah, they, they have, they have a class for it now. So I, I'm probably going to jump in that. So. 
Are there other bikes in it, Andrew? I mean, do you know? Have you seen uh, other baggers bikes out there, Chuck Wall, in that class? I've seen it before. Last round, there was a few. I don't know. I think there were more hooligan bikes than there were baggers. I think there was one bagger. But, yeah, I think that, I mean, I seven bikes, eight bikes. This past year, Andrew, I'm <clears throat> looking at your results this morning. I mean, you finished every single round except for the last one. Was the last? I don't recall the last one. Did you crash in the rain? I did. Yeah, that was a, that was a club, fun, right? Yeah, fun little, fun little ride. Um, coming out of that first chicane on the back straightaway, mm -hmm. just after a museum corner. Um, first lap, just went for a ride. Yeah, that was a, that was a rough one. I'm actually, I still have bruises from it. Wow. So the stock 1000 class, <clears throat> I think you'd be the first to admit this. You won two championships in that. And that class is like kind of gone nuts. I mean, there's so many guys in there now and there's so many good guys and good teams and good bikes. I mean, it's, it's, it's evolved a lot. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of people kind of play down the talent that's always been in there. I mean, for example, like Travis Wyman has been in there since, you know, the first season of it. And I mean, he's still winning races. So I, I feel like definitely there's been more talent and I, I love it. I love, you know, the rumors about, you know, super bike riders joining the class. A lot, I think a lot of people get uh, upset about it, but I'm makes me excited because, you know, ultimately we want to race the best. And if the best start racing against us in our class, I think it's, uh, uh, I think that's good for, not only the sport, but just us as racers. And then obviously I think the big thing that's changed in that class is you kind of touched on it, the teams. I think, you know, Altus being a very, you know, I mean, they're in a lot of classes, very knowledgeable team. You have the Honus, HB and C, like you have these large teams that actually are putting a lot of their resources into stock 1000 and, you know, making it a little bit more competitive. So I think that's, that's a really good thing for the, the sport. Yeah. So I've got a couple questions for you, Andrew. The first one's going to be a little longer. So let me just quickly ask you this first one um, regarding the Daytona 200 this year, we're asking a lot of the riders when we get a chance to talk to them, uh, are you going to compete in that this next year? Or are you just doing, I shouldn't say just doing baggers, but you'll be at, you'll be doing baggers at Daytona, but will you, will you also be on a Daytona 200 bike? Uh, no, no, I wish I was, but I don't have that uh, in the cards right now. Okay. Come on, you I, can pull one off. Yeah. I know. Oh, I raced it last year. That was, yes. I, it's, a, it's a rad race. I, I loved it. But uh, yeah, I, firstly, I don't even own a 600, so. <laughs> okay. I have, I have about a gaggle of ZX10s, but I don't have a 600. <laughs> well, actually, that's a perfect segue to talk about the gaggle of ZX10s because I, I want to talk about this season. I kind of came to understand a little bit about what was going on with your program. Um, I guess it was at uh, Brainerd and, you know, spent some time talking to your dad. And um, I became fascinated by some friends that you have that have stepped up and helped you in a lot of ways with some pretty incredible things. Um, and it, st it started with a guy that you met at a Panda Express in Wisconsin. I think I have that right. Uh, can you <laughs> yeah. talk about that a little bit? Tell us sort of the tale of, of what, what came to be with that whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of layers to unpack, but um, Ultimately, I mean, the, the short version is I was, it was 2017, I think, when I was riding the 600s. And uh, essentially, I was living in my van and driving across the country for like the East Coast rounds because if I was driving back and forth, it would just be firstly way too expensive and uh, time consuming. So uh, I kind of, after Atlanta, stayed on the East Coast all the way to Road America, which is, I think, back there and it was like a month and a half or two and um yeah so going from virginia to road america i i love panda express just put it out there orange chicken I good do stuff 
yeah, can't go wrong with it. So I, I went and stopped for dinner and this guy um, had a, a Triumph shirt on. And I was like, oh, you like motorcycles? And we kind of like started talking a little bit. It was his wife was there and he had his kids. And, you know, I told him a little bit about what I was doing. And like his kids apparently really like bikes. So we went over to the my van and unloaded the race bike and let the kids, you know, sit on it and, you know, it, we get to experience the, the race bike a little bit. And wow. so that was, I think, 2017. And we became pretty close friends. And he said, hey, I, let me, I'm trying to make sure that this is right. I think sister-in-law or brother-in-law, he said, my in-law's house is right next to Road America if you want to stay there next year. So being that I've never met this family, my crew chief and I show up um, Thursday afternoon and uh, walk, show up. They're like, you know, they told us where, where to go, but we show up and no one's there. We're like, oh, crap. Well, this is a little confusing. But then we get a text, oh, we're around the back. And they're like, they have this whole barbecue set up. And it was like, yeah, it was like a really welcome atmosphere. And then, uh, so that was like, it wasn't even the guy I met at Panda, it was his sister or, or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, they welcomed us with open arms. And then after that, we've kind of like, that's kind of our thing every year as we go out to Road America and we stay at their house and um, we've become pretty close. I mean, it's, it's really cool to be kind of almost like build a family off of racing. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter where they live. It's, it, you know, we're close. So that was really cool. And then I guess they started to play a larger part this year where they helped support, um, with getting me a bike. And um, unfortunately I sent, sent one down at Brainerd and punctured one, but the, the brother, not, another brother of that family was at Brainerd and he was one of the guys who went and drove and picked up the, the bike from the dealership after I crashed and got us, got us sorted there. So, I mean, it's just really couldn't do without him really. I mean, that's the only reason that I even finished the season and the only reason that next year's even look a little bit hopeful. So I think that, uh, just really grateful for kind of the relationships you you can build from a Panda Express trip in Wisconsin. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I want to fill in some blanks on that for you too, because I had done a story on it. And so the guy that you met at Panda, Eric Zern, it, his, you're right, his sister Heidi Larson is the one that you guys stayed with. And Heidi's husband is Scott. And then they've got another brother, Bobby. So this whole family yep. is all taken up with, with Andrew Lee and you know, the whole, your whole operation. And, you know, the amazing thing that happened at, well, there are a couple of amazing things that happened at Brainerd. One of them was that crazy crash that you had was nuts. And you got up and walked off the track. Um, you seemed mostly okay, but the bike was not okay. I mean, the, hmm. the, the frame was broken, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, you know, I, I had good protective gear. I mean, like showy helmets and bison leathers kind of saved me on that one. Um, but yeah, the bike uh, broke the frame, which in racing that is less than ideal. So yeah, had to unfortunately acquire another motorcycle after that. Yeah, and then Michael Gilbert was involved in it too, which is funny. I know you know you guys are good friends, and he coaches with you in JP forty three training. But I think wasn't it kind of like uh, you kind of took pieces bits and pieces off a bike that he had, and then you got this other bike, and then it kind of replaced the bike that Michael had. Um, you gave Michael back essentially most of what was the same uh, sort of assembly of a motorcycle, but it wasn't, it was actually a different motorcycle. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So, I mean, the story is still developing, which is even better. <laughs> I mean, good journalism. So um, what we got going on now is at Brainerd, I didn't want my crew to kind of stay up until like five in the morning to try to wait for the bike to get back. Cause I think it was like four, four hours round trip from the time that they left the track to the time they brought the bike back to the track. So I was talking to Michael and seeing about 
potentially just using his frame. So what we did is we just basically dropped the motor out of his frame, put my motor into it. And then that was the bike that I raced in Brainerd. Um, and I did, I, I raced that bike until the, the, till Barber, which if you didn't know what happened at Barber, I broke another frame. So I actually broke Michael's frame. <laughs> well, you know what, if you're going to break one, that's a good one to break. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now it's Michael's problem. No, but, um, <clears throat> so he had my bike, which we just basically transferred documents and now his bike that I totaled is now my bike. And then the bike that I gave him that sat in the trailer for the last three rounds is now his bike. Wow. Yeah. You might want to quit breaking bikes. <laughs> Dude, yeah. You're telling me. That's my recommendation. You're telling me. I'd also watch out for Sean because he knows a lot about this family. I wouldn't be surprised if he's sleeping in their house next year. Next year, yeah, I'm, yeah. There, I'm there, baby. They got a bed for me, I think, for sure. Um, and I do <laughs> express, so I'll go there too. Um, hey, so for the, the listeners, and most most of the listeners probably know this, so I'm probably stating the obvious, but I want to talk about the the a motorcycle, the vehicle identification number on a motorcycle is, is tied to the frame. So yep. when these frames go back and forth, it would be no big deal, except the VIN is part of that. And that's obviously part of, of Moto America too. And, and the other... Part of that is when you break a frame in Moto America, you can't weld it and go on because that's considered a modification of the frame. So that's a problem too. I know that the bike, the frame that you broke at Brainerd, it broke up around the headstock. Is that, is that what happened at Barber too with this other frame? No, the other frame kind of broke, punctured a hole in the main frame. Okay. It's not easy yeah. to break a frame on a motorcycle. So the crashes you've had... Uh, were big ones. We saw obviously the one at Brainerd. I, you know, there was so much going on at at uh, Barber. We didn't see that one, and that's a bummer that that happened. Um, but uh, so that's got to be tough. You got to deal with all that paperwork and changing these vins and who owns the actual frame with the vin on it. Right? It's it's crazy to deal with that. So yeah, uh, yeah. Crashing but, going to the DMV can be more painful than crashing. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd rather crash again than go to the DMV. Is, has that involved is that what it's been andrew has that involved you going to the, the dmv even though you're a road racer and these are not they're street bikes but you're racing it on you're not racing it riding on the street but you still have to go to the dmv right i haven't had to go to the dmv yet about it so okay. i'm hoping i'm hoping we can steer clear that's okay. what i'm hoping of he'll just make michael go yeah well michael lives next to the dmv i live out in the i live out in the boonies so it's easier for him to do it so Okay, then the other part, and I always get confused on this, is I think the bike you guys picked up, that, that, that they went down and picked up for you, at it was at Heinen Motorsports down in Osseo, Minnesota. That was a ZX-10R. And the difference between an R and an RR isn't a huge amount other than some forks and things like that. Um, and from what I understand, most of the time, the ZX-10R is a better base for a stock 1000 bike because you're putting a bunch of aftermarket. Well, you can't change the forks stock 1000 so actually how does that work tell us about uh, the that. forks are the same i think the only difference oh. is okay. um what is, the wheels are different and the what else is different uh just some motor like engine components okay but, but what, I, mostly, what i was getting yeah. go ahead i'm sorry andrew i was going to talk about pcp motorsports but you go ahead oh no no you're good go for it Okay, so then the other part of it, and this is the part that's confusing for me, is PCP Motorsports had a or ha had or has a ZX10RR that the Larsons also were involved in, and they're in they're in Wisconsin, and that's a dealership in California. And do you have that bike now? Yep, that bike is currently getting built, and we're putting some frame protection on it. Okay, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Learn, learn our lesson there. That's right. Well, you're only 22. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got some learning our lesson. So is that the bike that you're going to race in stock 1000 this coming season then? Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's finally got to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, and obviously Michael Gilbert will be back again this year. 
Um, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit too is you've had a, a fairly long-standing client or client sponsor, which is kind of a client, I guess, in uh, Franklin Armory with Jay Jacobson, who owns that company. And he apparently used to race an AFM. So he lives in Nevada where the company is, I think. And you have had a pretty good relationship with him for a while. And he's been pretty, a pretty staunch supporter of your program. Is it, do I have that all correct? Yeah. Yeah. It worries me a little bit. <laughs> it worried me that I didn't have, wouldn't have the details right. Oh no. It worries me that you know where everyone lives. Oh yeah. Come on, yeah. Sean. I, what I do you be, do? I would be worried too. Are you, are you, are you a PI? He's a professional I'm stalker. I'm stalker. I'm stalker level yeah. with, well, listen, Andrew, you know, your dad, between your dad and me, I mean, I think I talk to your dad probably more than I do you. So, I mean, I kind of, I kind of do know your life story short of being a complete stalker. So, um, right. but um, yeah, I mean, your dad's obviously a huge part of your program too, Andrew, and he's always looking out for you too. So I, I got a shout out to him as well, but you got a lot of good people in your corner and I mean, it's tough. It's just a matter of getting these pieces and putting them all together, but probably being in, in uh, King of the Baggers and Stock 1000 is probably going to be a pretty cool thing because you're going to get some uh, uh, even more exposure, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I jumped on it so quickly is seeing the publicity that the Baggers series is getting right now. I, I, I look at it as good exposure for anyone who's a sponsor of mine. So, yeah, and then... Franklin Armory has been on with me since 2018, I think. Um, and yeah, the, the, the guys and girls over at that company uh, have been super supportive and yeah, I really couldn't do without them. So just really grateful for the people in my corner and the bagger thing is kind of me trying to uh, give more value to the people who helped out. So now, I'm sure you've talked to some of the guys that have raced the, the baggers like, like we have. And to all of them seem to say like, they're really good motorcycles to ride. Like, I think the general perception would be that you look at them and you're like, how do they get those around a racetrack? But then when you talk to these guys that have raced them and when they're set up to race, they're actually nice bikes to ride. Have you heard the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty good friends with uh, Kyle Wyman and he's, yeah. He's definitely said that the bike is a lot better than you would expect. So I'm excited to experience that. So the first ride on that is today. You haven't ridden it at all yet. Right. It's kind of cool. Are you, you excited about getting on it? I am. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be, I, I equated it to kind of learning how to ride again, being that I've rode, my roommate has a Harley and I rode it for about, a block and a half to the grocery store and back. Right. Um, so that's my extent of Harley experience. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be quite the learning learning curve. So I'm excited. Do you ever go to pickup sticks? Pickup sticks? Yeah. Or is that like not good enough? I don't. I don't even know what that is. Oh really? Oh. What is a, that? It's a, it's another fast food like Asian place. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, I'm too good for that. I go to Panda Express. Okay, that's, uh, I didn't know if you were just at Panda Express or if the orange chicken at the other place was good enough. <laughs> no, no. I don't even know why I brought that up again, but it just struck me as uh, I just came to mind, so I threw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, none of that. Can't uh -huh. have it. Well, look, um, Andrew, we, we know you've got some work to do today, and um, do you, are you wearing regular leathers or chaps? Got the chat. Okay, I, yeah. I thought those might take a little extra time to clean because of the, you know, the fringe and stuff. So we're going to let you go and get prepared for your first baggers ride. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you and, and seeing how that went. For some reason, I can pitch you on that bike. And I think it's going to be a pretty cool deal for you. And it, it gives you some more racing and some more opportunities to show your, uh, your skill set. So Thanks for joining us and uh, be safe and careful out there at Chuckwalla this weekend, but uh, also have good luck and, and see what you can do with that thing. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks gentlemen for having me on. And as always, it was a blast. So uh, look forward to doing it again. All right. Thanks, and Sean, Sean will continue to stalk from afar yes. and we'll have more information about you next time we talk and uh, it'll, we'll go from there. 
I'm convinced he almost knows more about me than I do, which is worrisome. I know it is a worry. Huh? I'm, I'm worried about what he knows about me. I'm yeah. working on his biography, Andrew. So. <laughs> oh man. Oh All right. man. All right, boys. You have a good day. All right. See you, you guys too.